G'day, welcome back to my channel. Now, this might not be exactly what you thought you were going to see. This is actually a Matchbox kit. It's 170 second scale. And this is a Hawker Fury. Hawker Fury, same as the, uh, the Airfix kit we're going to look at. But this was a barrel of fun. It was, it was so nice to put together and everything worked. Even the old bloody ancient decals, they worked. Everything went together fine. I love this kit. It was absolutely brilliant. So I'm in my hobby store and I find this one right so wow you're thinking well I enjoyed the 170 second scale 148 is going to be heaps better hmm well maybe <laughs> there's some problems okay roll the music and I'll tell you about it so here we have it the Airfix Hawker Fury 1 in 148 scale. That's a lovely bit of box art. The, um, you know, you see this in the store, you think, that looks lovely, looks really good. And Airfix has been really putting out some beautiful kits lately with lovely CAD moulding and, you know, CAD design and, you know, beautiful injection moulding, even though they're coming out of India now. I'm not really happy with the plastic, but, you know, there's some fantastic Spitfires and, and, and Blenheims and, oh, you know, Bowfighters and all kinds of lovely things. Um, and, you know, if you've seen my recent uh, Buccaneer, yes, all starting with B. All the B stuff's good. Anyhow, there's some lovely kits. So Airfix then puts this out, and you think, this is terrific. Hawker Fury and 148, it's got to be good. Well, here's a warning. It's a 1970-odd kit, and the mould has not been updated. Now, this would have been fine in the day. I mean, back then... The, the, you know, if you've got a white box, it would have been crisp and the mould would have been clean and it would have been, you know, terrific. Because there's a lot of really good detail on this. There's, there's lovely rivets on the um, on the cowl there. And there's, you know, beautiful sort of um, detail as far as all the, the wings and the, the back fuselage and everything. All the design on the struts there. And, you know, it actually has a lot of quality to it. But sadly, the moulds are so rooted after all these years... And with the um, Indian plastic, which is really soft, it's warped, it's bent, parts don't fit. Uh, there's length, you know, fuselage halves are not the same length. It's just horrendous. I mean, you know, you think you're building some cheap bloody Russian kit. God's sake, Evix. Anyhow, you can persevere, and I did, and I managed to produce that. So it is possible to get a kit out of this, well, a model out of the kit. So let's see my journey and how I managed to somehow persevere through all the problems and get that result. So here are the kit parts. As you can see, it's pretty flashy and it's that old Airfix style where everything on single sprues and stuff suicides off. Injection marks everywhere that had to be filled, all the most obvious spots. The... Um, Fuselage sort of fitted together there. I managed to do a dry fit, but you've got to do a lot of sculpting. You've got to do a lot of reshaping. You've got to be bothered to spend the time, and you know, it can be done. The interior is not too bad. I mean, there's some detail there. There's a nice little decal there that gives you the dash dials, which is quite good because at that point I wasn't lashing out. You get a sort of a basic sort of interior, which looks fine because you can't see much. There's a motor, which is all very well and good, but that gets covered up by the time you put the cowling on. But it's a putty fest, yep, you're going to go through a lot of putty. Anyhow, I managed to persevere and get things together and get things lined up and um, tested the struts and got those in and I uh, hit fought me all the way and I said, putty, 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 yes. The front engine um, cow top is the worst. It does not fit. It requires a lot of surgery and a lot of extra plastic and putty in there to get that to work. Now, I decided to distract you from all those problems by doing some rib detail. So, yeah, I taped up the wings and I airbrushed on some effects using sort of blacks and silvers. And eventually, I started to get some nice looking effects on those wings. Now, in all my sanding and scraping, I'd removed all the ribs off the back of the fuselage. So I did the same trick there. I actually taped that up and sprayed it and made it look like there was still basically raised ribs there. Anyhow, this was all coming along well, but I had to address the front of the uh, aircraft, which needs to be a silvery colour. It's, it's aluminium, but it's more brushed and shiny, whereas the rear half is all doped aluminium cloth. So it took a while to get the effect 
of the two different types of surfaces. But I managed to do it. I actually managed to figure out a way to do it. And I did this by copiously brushing, dry brushing on silver paint over the metal on the front cowling. Just brush, brush, brush until I got that shiny. And the rear section, I actually picked a colour off the photo and uh, got to do it. Now the propeller, look at that. Look how horrible that is. And that's what I did after a whole lot of sculpting. Yeah, you can fix a propeller, but you've got to prepare to drill things out and screw things and cut things. And yeah, now I made myself some little masks here so I could paint the wheels. And um, by the time everything was scraped, sanded, and painted, it didn't look too bad. And there's the first trial fit of um, of the Fury, and it's looking all right. Now I've used some uh, finish here to uh, basically lay down my decals. Now these are the decals in the kit. They're brand new decals. They're really lovely. A uh, bit of a trick and a hint. Cut that checkered thing in half. Put it on in two halves. It's the only way you'll get it on without going insane. And I had that tip from someone else. So here she is. The decals are on. The things together. It's actually not looking too bad. But I needed to um, flatten a bit the um, the back section so I basically masked off my last shiny stuff and run a flat coat off everything. Next I had to dress a missing part. There's um, a little aerial at the back on top of the, um, the, the rear stabilizer and I started to make that out of sprue but it was just a bit too thick and checking the photo I realized it needed to be a lot thinner so I changed to using brass wire and I made myself one up that's close as I could out of the brass wire, and I was pretty happy with that. It really seemed to suit. Uh, that was all painted up, everything was put together, and it was looking almost finished. But no, there's more. There's always more. Rigging time. Now, I did a bit of a trick here. I rigged without the top wing on. This was something I wanted to try. I rigged it all up, and then I put the top wing on and glued it on. And that was so much easier, and the result was exactly what I wanted. So there we have it, the Airfix 148 Hawker Fury. Yes, it can be put together and you can kind of fix all the problems. The question is, is it worth it to you? Would you rather just build a little matchbox kit that is actually going to fit and everything's going to be nice, you're going to have a great experience and it's a lot smaller, I know, but you can probably get just about everything done on it. Or should we wait until Airfix does a retool of this? I certainly would. I mean, I love the subject. I love the Hawker Fury. I love the look of it. I love the way that you have to do different kind of silver effects or aluminium effects. Um, it's a nice proportion and a very beautiful plane. But this kit is showing its age something chronic. So, quite frankly, build the Matchbox kit and wait till Airfix re-release this with a new mould. And you save yourself a lot of heartache. Or if you're just quite happy to sort of masochistically go through and suffer all the problems, as I did, well, you know, you can end up with a reasonable result. It's up to you. It all depends what you want to do with the hobby. But I thought I'd share with you this experience of, you know, something fun and easy and something that's really taxing and really pushes you. And, you know, each have their merits and it's up to you to decide how do you want to approach the hobby. Are you here for a good time? Or are you here for a long time? <laughs> All right. Well, we'll go over the montage of the final photos that I took of this kit before I went into storage and a few things broke on it, <laughs> which I'm hiding quite desperately. Like the back wheel there is about to fall off and it's missing its hubcap. I'll have to find that somehow in the box somewhere rattling around some of the parts that fell off this. But look, I still probably at the end was glad I built this kit. I'm just very disappointed in Airfix for um, still punching out old kits and new boxes. Now they have changed their practice. They do now put on there the mold date and the release date. So you can see this would have like a mold date of 1970 something, right? And then would have a release date of 2020, all right? So you know, yes, it's a shiny new box and you're going to get nice new decals, which is great. You know, you're going to get nice new instructions. That's lovely. But you're going to have and suffer a very old kit that's in you know, the mould's not in good nick after all these years. So, buyer beware. All right, that's it for now. It's goodbye from Australia, and it's Huru from Harry Hidini.